members of the commission. I want to thank you also for the privilege of having this opportunity to address certain aspects of the United States trade rep rep relationship with India. I represent Crop Life America. It's the trade association here in the United States of the U.S. crop protection industry, which provides virtually all the crop protection products and agricultural biotechnology trades to Americans farmers and ranchers. Our industry is continuously innovating to invent new crop protection technologies, chemistries, biotechnology traits, and all with the goal of improving and enhancing crop yield, quality, and environmental outcomes. We are the voice of the crop, global crop protection industry here in the United States, and our companies today are being very negatively impacted by the lack of intellectual property protection and market access barriers that exist in India. Now, today, earlier today and, and yesterday, you've had many experts pointing out the numerous problems with India's lack of intellectual property and innovative protections. Crop Life America would like to take this opportunity to just focus on one very small and very specific aspect, but that do impact American farmers, American industry very greatly. And that's protecting regulatory data. And if you'll indulge me a few minutes, I'll take a little time to explain what that actually is. The generation of safety and efficacy studies required by all national authorities around the world for the market approval or the sale of any agrochemical product requires a significant investment of time and resources. This registration process, which is really a license to sell, is the essential assurance to farmers and consumers that agrochemicals meet established regulatory requirements for safety, efficacy, and quality. The studies are provided to the regulatory agencies on the understanding that they are considered as proprietary data and can't be disclosed to or relied upon by third parties for their own regulatory submissions. Studies regarding new chemical entities are protected, therefore, against any unfair commercial use pursuant to Article 39 of the Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property, TRIPS, which preclude third parties from unfairly relying on proprietary data for commercial purposes, for example, such as obtaining market approval. Effective protection of proprietary safety and efficacy studies from unfair commercial use by competitors or others require national authorities to do three things. One, they have to ensure the global norm of providing the generator or the title holder of those studies with a minimum, in this case it's been fairly established, of a minimum 10 year exclusivity period for such new chemicals the date of that starting with the market approval of that innovative product. This is the time period established by the United States, the European Union, and all, virtually all recent free trade partners of the EU and the US. Second, national authorities would permit the market entry of a product copying the original following the expiration of this 10-year period, provided the copy that the regist this follow-on or Me Too registrant is providing demonstrates that the chemical profile of the copy product is equivalent to the original product and therefore does not represent an unacceptable risk to users, consumers, etc., or the environment. And third, National authorities should establish that any publication of data summaries for the benefit of transparency does not represent disclosure to the public domain and the loss of protection. Data exclusivity periods are implemented to provide this adequate balance, if you wish, between protecting the efforts of the generator of the data and preserving the ability to have market entry of generic or copy products without re requiring the duplication, the identical duplication of those safety and efficacy studies. This is the compromise that the US Congress, the EU has made 
So you, for a societal benefit, you do not duplicate those studies. Effective impl implementation, however, of this process uh, requires that the generator provide a tremendous amount of data. In fact, only one in 140,000 molecules in the U.S. go from lab to field, or lab to lake. And because of the chemical nature and the wide variety of the organisms that are potentially affected by their use, crop protection products are that, therefore subject to all of these tests. These are epidemiology tests, toxicology tests, environmental fate tests, etc. Over 120 of these, at a minimum, are produced. And in the United States, we are now up to almost 170 of these on every molecule that is being proposed. And unfortunately, this is a very expensive proposition. We, as you'll see from the paper, according to our independent third party study done in 2008, so it's obviously already out of date, the development of these new crop protection chemicals costs in excess of $256 million, and it takes over nine, it's virtually now over 10 years for the EPA to review and to approve those products. That brings us to India. India has no data protection for agricultural chemical or crop protection products. Test data produced by potential registrants is not awarded any period of exclusivity or non-disclosure. The global crop protection industry, including all Crop Life American members with interests in selling products to India farm, India's farmers and ranchers, have joined with other Indian crop protection companies themselves, indigenous Indian crop protection companies, to support a pesticides management bill, which would implement this global data protection process for crop protection products. This bill, however, has been pending in the parliament for over seven years now, and its absence continues to hinder trade with India. U.S. government go companies, excuse me, face overly burdensome requirements for market approval in India, with no guarantee that their proprietary and competitively sensitive data will remain undisclosed. Not only does the United States and global trade suffer, but we've done some existing studies to show very dramatically that Indian farmers suffer because they're denied the innovative and the latest crop protection products, which are available to farmers in all and many other nations that adhere to TRIPS and the global standard of protecting regulatory data. In fact, a major study that we've recently done comparing cotton farmers in India and Brazil indicate that while Brazil has 10 years of data protection and has approved over 83 innovative technologies to allow their farmers to grow cotton. India, which has no data protection, has approved only 35 technologies. As a result, the Brazilian farmer actually is growing 300% more cotton on 10% of the land that the Indian farmer is growing cotton. This dramatic and remarkable in a set of innovation is just proof positive that denying the ability of multinational and other innovative companies to invest in India, and they're being blocked by lack of data protection, lack of in inadequate disclosure, is hurting not only our trade, but hurting Indian farmers. I know this is a very narrow issue, but it's one that's very significant for American trade, since agriculture is obviously one of our major commodities that is being traded. Thank you for this opportunity to present this one test case of Indian protectionism and its impact on U.S. innovation and trade. Thank you. Thank you. Our next